failures refers to partial complete non-mechanical blockage of the small or large intestine. The word ileus comes from the Latin word for colic. There are two types of intestinal obstruction, that is the mechanical intestinal obstruction and non-mechanical obstruction. In mechanical obstructions, they occur because the bowel is physically blocked and its contents cannot pass the point of the obstruction. And this happens with the bowel twists by itself by some non volvulus or as a result of hernias, impacted feces, abnormal tissue growth, or the presence of foreign bodies in the intestines. A non-mechanical obstruction that's called ileus or paralytic ileus occurs because peristalsis stops. Peristalsis refers to the rhythmic contraction that moves materials through the bowel. And ileus is most common associated with infection of the peritoneum, that's the membrane lining the abdomen, and it's one of the major causes of bowel obstruction in infants and children. The causes of paralytic ileus or ileus, in addition to postoperative causes, ileus also starts from intraperitoneal or retroperitoneal inflammation such as appendicitis, diverticulitis, or perforated duodenal ulcers. Retroperitoneal or intraperitoneal hematomas such as rupture, aortic aneurysm, lumbar compression fractures, metabolic disturbances like hypokalemia, drugs including opioids, anticholinergic, sometimes calcium channel blockers and it can sometimes occur in association with renal or thoracic diseases like lower rib fractures and lower lobe pneumonias or myocardial infarction. Gastric and colonic motility disturbances after abdominal surgeries are common and the small bowel is typically least affected with motility and absorption returning to normal after surgery. The stomach emptying is usually impaired for about 24 hours or more and the colon is most affected parts which may remain inactive for 48 to 72 hours or more. The sensor symptoms for paralytic ileus include abdominal distension, vomiting, and a vagus discomfort. Pain rarely has a classic colic pain present in mechanical obstruction, and there may be a obstipation or passage of light amounts of water disturbed. Auscultation reveals a silent abdomen or minimal peristalsis and the abdomen is not tender unless the underlying cause is an inflammatory. The diagnosis for ileus includes a clinical evaluation and sometimes x-rays. The most essential task is to distinguish ileus from intestinal obstruction, and in both conditions, x-rays show gases distension of isolated segments of the intestine. In postoperative ileus, however, gas may accumulate more in the colon than in the small bowel. Postoperative accumulation of gas in the small pile of it implies development of complications such as obstruction or peritonitis. And in other types of ileus, X ray findings are similar to obstruction. Differentiation can be difficult unless clinical features clearly favor one or the other. Water soluble contrast studies may help to differentiate between ileus and obstruction. The treatment of paralytic ileus involves continuous nasogastric suction nail per oral status, intravenous fluids and electrolytes. A minimum amount of sedatives and avoidance of opioids and anticholinergic drugs is indicated. Maintaining an adequate cell and potassium levels that's more than 4 millimoles per liter is especially important. Ileus persisting for more than one week probably has the mechanical obstructive cause and laparotomy should be considered in these cases. Sometimes colonic ileus can be relieved by coloscopic decompletion Rarely, cecostomy is required. Colonoscopic decompression is helpful in treating pseudo obstruction known as Ogilvy's syndrome, which consists of apparent obstruction of the splenic flexure. Although no cause can be found by contrast in a colonoscope for the fail of gas and feces to pass at this point, some clinicians use IV neostigmine, which requires cardiac monitoring to treat Ogilvy's syndrome. Okay, as a summary, paralytic ileus refers to temporary arrest of intestinal peristalsis. It occurs most commonly after abdominal surgery and particularly when intestines have been manipulated. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, and vague abdominal discomfort. The diagnosis is based on x-ray findings and clinical impression. 
and treatment is supportive with nasogastric suctioning and intravenous fluids.